Yo, what's up guys? It's BP. And I guess today is going to be my first non sort of anime related video. And I might get a bit passionate. So I was watching a couple videos from the Japanese YouTuber, Let's Ask Shogo. Cool, like, cool channel. He introduces, you know, he wants to promote Kyoto and sort of certain Japanese traditional aspects and stuff. And it's a cool channel. I mean, he also talks about the dark side of Japan and things like that, right? And so one of the things that he mentioned was, so there were two things. One was about a case of a woman who was sexually assaulted and raped and how you know typical of the japanese system they like didn't prosecute the guy it happens all the fucking time it's really fucked up and then there was a, another video which he might still have up or he might have deleted it but it was about a michael and a michael is basically a the, the simplest way to think about it for you guys is like a geisha in training right and there was a woman who was a former michael who when she was 16 she talked about how she had to like go out and drink with customers and all this kind of stuff. And mind you that drinking, the drinking age is 20 in Japan. I will definitely get into my feelings about the certain dark aspects of Japanese culture as a guy who's been here for 14 years and counting. I want to talk about one thing that I think is a big problem with these kinds of why, why these things kind of happen. So, and it's parents. You know, I've worked teaching and that kind of stuff. And so I've spent a lot of time around kids and the parents and I've taught like every single age group from three to old people, right? So I spent a lot of time around Japanese people. I spent a lot of time around Japanese kids and I've seen how parents interact with their kids here and things that kids will say about their parents and all this kind of stuff. I think one of the big problems with these, with, with these kind of situations is that parents do not pay a fucking attention to their kids. What do I mean by this? So in the case of the woman who was sexually assaulted, right? So she was at the gym and the guy who sexually assaulted her was an older man, much older man. She was like 19 and this guy was much older and she helped him. She just joined this gym and she helped him or he helped her with the, with the machines. And then after the, afterwards, he like waited around for her and she asked, he asked her if she wanted to go get a drink. You know, she wasn't particularly interested in him, but she felt like, oh, I just joined this gym. And so to make a good sort of relationship with the people at this gym and this guy, I should go. And that ended up being her downfall, unfortunately, was, you know, going out with this guy who should know who the fuck he is. And then in the case of the girl who was a Maiko when she was 16, one thing I kept thinking about is how the fuck did her parents not know about this shit? Now, I know for the Maiko part, they're not allowed to have cell phones and everything like that. So I don't know if somehow they are not allowed to be in contact with their parents because the woman who sort of trains them and takes over for like the, um, the diff like the, who takes over their training, like she joins into, um, they join into a sort of house, so to speak. And that woman sort of becomes their mother, right? And they, 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 they train there. And so I can't imagine, maybe they're not allowed to talk to their parents, but if that's the case, like what the fuck are you doing sending your child there? right that like that would be seem kind of fucked up to me if i can't if i'm not allowed to contact my child all the time and be constantly be updated on what's going on then i'm not sending my child over there she's 16 i'm the one who still has like the ultimate say on whether or not she's going to go do that or not and so so you think about the woman with the gym basically the idea that the, it's fucked up that she thought that she had to do this even though she didn't really want to right and then you think about the 16 year old being having to drink and then also having to go to mixed bathing houses with the, with, with male customers. And you think to yourself, how, how is she not telling her parents? Right. And you think about it and it's because parents don't seem to really like a lot of parents just don't seem to give a shit here. Right. And you know, I've, I've, I've seen it and I've seen parents. They're so concerned about the how academically how their kids are doing or oh you know is he gonna he has to study to go into get into high school and study to get into university but the emotional needs of your kids and everything oh fuck that shit we're not paying attention to any of that shit at all it drives me fucking insane like the idea that a woman thought she had to go out with some guy that she had no interest in some older guy go out for a drink and she felt like she had to do that because that's sort of the appropriate thing to do i think is a failure on her parents part now, this is not, a, of course, these are not all Japanese parents and everything like that. I'm not saying that, right? But you see this kind of shit a lot. And I think it's more telling in the case of the 16-year-old. The fact that either her parents were complicit with this shit, which makes it even more fucked up. 
or she never told them. And the fact that she didn't feel comfortable enough to tell her parents about it says something about her parents. And we, they, I'm, I'm sure the parents don't necessarily know the dark side of that Michael, you know, geisha, that whole traditional world in Kyoto. It's just like in the sumo world, there's some fucked up shit that goes on in the sumo world. You would at least research, right? You'd be like, oh, my, my daughter wants to be a Maiko and let me go check and see what's going on here. Let me talk to some other Maiko and see and let me check, search the internet and see like, what are people saying about this and blah, 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 blah. But apparently not, right? My guess, I have no idea, is that they were so overjoyed with the fact that, oh, my daughter is going to become a Maiko and do this traditional Japanese thing. And oh, it's so great. And look what I can say to everyone else that they ultimately didn't give a shit. Right, because there's no fucking way that my 16 year old daughter is doing something like this and then she doesn't come home and tell me that she had to drink or that I'm not in constant contact with this woman who has my child that I'm like not checking up on this like all the fucking time. I mean, it's just like everywhere else where nowadays little kids got smartphones and they just give them the phones keep them distracted and all this other crazy bullshit and it's funny because I I remember I was teaching this one little like high school group of kids. One of the girls said, she told me, she said, oh yeah, if I had a boyfriend, I guess she was about 17. She said, oh, if I had a boyfriend, I wouldn't tell my parents about it. And I was like, well, so what would you say if you were gonna leave to go hang out with your boyfriend? What would you, you, you know, and your parents said, oh, like, oh, where are you going? And you know, what are you doing? Who are you going with? And she would say, oh, I was just going with my friend. And I'm like, so you would just lie. You would just straight up lie to your parents about a very important thing like they they have a right to know that you, you you have a boyfriend right and it just didn't even like dawn in her head to be like oh yeah i shouldn't do that kind of thing but like that that's just more of a that, that just goes to show you that her relationship with her parents there's something up there it doesn't mean it's awful but it's it yeah, that's a problem if you as a child can't feel like you can tell your parents oh mom dad i have a boyfriend that tells you something and i remember i had this other class and um, we were talking about like Father's Day or something like that. And I, they, they were junior high school, they were 15. And it was, they were all girls, it was all girls. And I asked them, I said, oh, um, like, what would you get your dad as a present or something like that for his birthday or Father's Day? I don't remember. And none of them had any idea of what they could get their dad because they didn't know what their dad was into. They didn't know what their dad liked or anything like that. No, there was one. There was one girl who she knew exactly what she would get for her dad. And you know what the difference between her was that her and her dad, like, hung out you know they they would go to movies and stuff and hang out and so they would have their little father daughter dates so she actually had a relationship with her dad and she was like oh yeah i would get him this blah 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 because he likes that stuff right that i i i kind of see that as a rarity in japan i mean i know adults who i've asked them and they have never seen their parents like hug or kiss or show any sort of real intimacy and so like the 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 the, the parent child relationship here can be a bit sterile and just sort of like a, like there's like a giant wall between parents and children, right? And like I said before, they'll care so much about their academics. They'll be like, oh my God, my child is failing or this or that. Blame the teacher for that. But then they don't know anything that's going on with their child, like emotionally or spiritually or anything like that. And there's just nothing. There's nothing for them. And there's kind of this joke in, in sort of English, the English speaking circles in Japan, because it's, it's kind of true. It's like, if let's say your, your child stole something from the store, pickpocketing something, right? The store or the police and everyone would call the school before they call the parents. And you think to yourself, why the fuck are they calling the school and talking to their homeroom teacher? This has nothing to do with them. They should call their parents, right? And somehow the school will have responsibility for the fucked up behavior of their student. And it's because they, Japan has sort of outsourced parenting to everyone else, right? When your child is fucking up in school and getting bad grades, they have this thing called monster parents where they'll blame the teacher in the school. Be like, why is my child doing so poorly? And it's because because your child doesn't fucking do anything. But no, 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 no. It can't be me. It can't be my parenting. No, no, that can't be the reason that everything's all screwed up. I mean, I recently saw this video that was by um, the guy Nobita, and he was talking to Kaho Shibuya, who is a former um, Japanese porn star, right? She talked about how the relationship, she doesn't have a good relationship with her parents, right? And when she talks about her childhood and the fact that the first person to sexually assault her was her older brother. I think she said she was like 11 and he was like 14. I can't, I'm not exactly sure if that was correct. But, you know, he started like, you know, tickling her or whatever, which is fine. Your little sister, you're messing around with your little sister, fine. But then he started like, you know, touching her chest and everything. And then... Eventually she told her parents about it and they couldn't believe they, you know, 
they didn't they didn't do what proper parents do is one the big thing is reflect what the fuck did i do to my son to make him think this shit was okay and then what the fuck am i doing with my daughter right this is like oh my god you know instead of being like oh my god we need to fix this as a family no nah, they didn't do any of that shit right it could possibly be their fault that they have a child a 14 year old that is molesting his sister no 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 no. that couldn't possibly be a fault of their parenting at all it's like they like looking in the mirror and being like oh we fucked up we fucked up as parents our children do not want to talk to us they can't confide in us what is wrong with us no no that does not come into anyone's mind at all i mean when you hear about the childhood and her parents and their attitudes and the way that they were all raised you kind of see why how she got into the porn industry right and this goes into my theory that like no woman man or woman but particularly woman enters that industry if they have like loving caring parents that give them the emotional support they need and everything like that you don't you don't you don't go into porn right that's not really something that happens it's almost like textbook oh my parents were shitty and i and i was i grew up in an unstable or abusive or just fucked up household and look i ended up a porn star go figure but going back to this idea of parents just not paying attention and not really caring. So there's a website that is now, it's no longer updated. It's still, it's still available. You can still go to it. It's called Tokyo Reporter. It is a trashy website. It is, right? But it was a website that just focused on all the fucked up and bad news in Japan. As of January of this year, 2022, the site is like done, not updated anymore. But you can still go in and look at all the old articles and stuff like that, right? So I did a Google search. I looked up Enjo Kosai and Tokyo Reporter. Now, Enjo Kosai is what is literally is called compensating dating. It's basically when women, usually high school girls, underage girls, get paid paid to go on dates with men now that could just be dating but it can also involve sex and there's just a ton of articles on this website about this right and here's what's crazy you see that these girls one are interested in doing it and then two they meet these guys on dating apps what they call day ik like apps here they meet on dating apps or on twitter and i'm like how is your 15 year old your 16 year old leaving the house doing all this shit and you don't fucking notice. One, the fact that your kid thinks that this is okay shows that you fucked up, right? And there's just constant, constant articles of people not paying attention, not knowing what their kids are doing. If your kids are really young, not monitoring what they're using, like they're using these smartphones and everything like that. One, giving them that smartphone or tablet or whatever, knowing what fucked up shit is out there. And you're just like, oh yeah, it's fine. Oh yeah, my child just left. And yeah, I don't know where she is or what she's going or what she's doing. I don't know anything. I don't know. Oh, look, she's getting money to bang some 40 year old man. Like, oh my God, it just, oh, Japan. It just, oh, like, I know that these can be problems anywhere, but I'm particularly in Japan right now, right? I'm living in Japan. And I think people have this sort of, some people have this idea of Japan about like, oh, they're so, you know, they, they think about children and their education system and all this stuff is great. And no, no, that's not necessarily true. Look, are they taking their children to drag queen shows like in the West? No, they aren't doing that kind of fucked up shit, but they got their own fucked up shit that they're doing to kids that's fucking up kids, right? And you wonder why the birth rate is dropping and why people don't want to get married and all this kind of shit because you fucked them up. God damn it, I'm done. Actually, no, wait, I'm not. I remember this is an old story. This story is probably like from 12 years ago. I got me and another other bunch of teachers got invited to this high school to do like a international day with the kids there. And so we walk into the room and I'm sitting, I'm sitting at my group and the school is a commercial high school, which in Japan tends to be mostly girls, at least 80% girls, right? So my group, I think was all girls or like one boy. And we're sitting there and we had paper cups because like we all had like, as like for like our drinks, right? For like water and stuff like that. And so we wrote our names on them. So we know whose cup is whose, right? And the girl that I'm sitting next to, she was, I think... 16 or 17 and she's drawing on her cup and she draws some dude's name and it's like like hearts and stuff and so i think i asked i was like oh so is that like your boyfriend or something and then they're like her friends and stuff kind of start giggling about it and then they tell me that he was like i think at least 23 i don't think he was 10 years old or like 27 i think he was 23 and then my brain exploded i was just like what the f what the fuck this is and like no one in that group thought that this was kind of like weird or maybe you know wrong or just kind of like oh this is a bad idea and that was i think the first time it hit me where i was like oh what the fuck is going on and the fact that of course it's fucked up that this 23 year old is taking advantage of this teenager right and i just think oh dear god no all right now i'm done